Hello everybody, this is CJ Wiley with more Adventures on the Road. I've talked about a lot of the different uh, road partners I had through the years that, that really made a difference and um, one of those was a man named Dalton Leone who was an Asian guy from uh, San Francisco and he was an actor. He'd been in some episodes of uh, Ironsides and uh, a couple other movies. He'd been in some plays and uh, he was just a, a very uh, sophisticated man for being a pool hustler. He wrote poetry and we uh, actually met in St. Louis in Afton Billiards. I was down there playing and uh, we matched up and uh, was gambling for uh, probably played six or eight hours and played to a standstill. He was uh, definitely an accomplished player and he really wasn't even uh, playing his best game at the time, but he just, he played, he knew so much more about the game than I did at the time because I was uh, 17, I believe, when we played and uh, he just was a, he's a really smart player, really seasoned. So, you know, Playing guys like that, I always learn something. Even if I didn't win, I just always learn something. Like when I played the faceless man, Vernon Elliott in Indianapolis, I've shared that story where I really saw how strong that touch of inside was. You know, his banking ability and ability to to kill the cue ball. And, and uh, we used to call it, uh, he had it on a string or he made the cue ball float from position to position with no after-contact spin. It was a really strong way to play, and that's how I developed my game and really took it to another level later in my career and, uh, you know, put it into a form that I could teach called the Touch of Inside system that you can uh, find uh, on my website at masteringpocketbillers.com. But uh, Dalton... And I, after we played, started talking, and he, he came out and told me really who he was and uh, his experience playing in Houston. And, and, again, he was about the wild eight under the top, top players. So they couldn't hardly give him the seven ball, but they could give him the eight. So uh, we agreed to, to team up and go on a road trip, which we traveled uh, for about six months straight and went to all, you know, all over the Midwest. But uh, we first went up to Minnesota and had a really good trip up there. We won about 20,000 in, in all the small towns up there and then went to Minneapolis. And that's usually what the road players did. We would play all the small towns and win as much money as we could and then go to the big city and try to parlay it into a lot more because usually the biggest gamblers were in the big cities. So there's a place called Gentleman Gems that uh, was a 24-hour pool room on Lake Street in Minneapolis. And that's, the, uh, that's actually the first place I got robbed at gunpoint. I was with Dalton, and uh, we parked his van around the corner, and he went in uh, the pool room. And I stayed outside uh, for a little while, then came in. And as I was locking the van, he actually took the keys, fortunately, because... When I locked the van and started to go up to go around the corner to the pool room, two guys came around the corner and rushed me and put me up against the van and stuck a gun to my throat and uh, demanded my money and wanted the keys to get into the van. Of course, I didn't have them, and I said I didn't have them, and they stuck the gun even harder into my throat, and, and, uh, and I said, I'm serious. I mean, I was, <laughs> I was definitely white as a ghost, I'm sure, but they could tell I, I really didn't have the keys. So they took the money out of my pocket, took my cue stick, which was the worst loss I got because that particular cue stick, it was a Sean uh, Sneaky Pete. It was a five point house cue made by uh, Bob Rundy up there. And I've told before, uh, Dalton had me running five racks in a row every day with that stick when I was practicing, if I wasn't in action. And uh, he told me that uh, the best players in the world could run five racks in a row every day, even though later he told me that he was really just testing me. But, uh, you know, that's one thing about the mind. If, if somebody convinces you you can do something, especially if you convince you, yourself you can do something, you usually can, as long as it's not just physically impossible, which uh, 
rented five racks wasn't, but you know, it was the cue stick was just part of me and I just loved that cue. So they took my cue, took the money out of my front pocket. I actually still had five hundred dollar bills in my back left pocket that they didn't get. But then they ran off and I ended up running back in the pool room and they said I was green. And my actual facial color was green. And I said, I've been robbed, I've been robbed. And uh, some of the guys ran out, but of course the guys were gone. Never got that stick back. And uh, anyway, uh, that was that was kind of one of the downsides of the, of the trip. But uh, we ended up staying there, and, and Dalton was having trouble with his game. And uh, another little glitch we had was he ended up playing this guy uh, – who was kind of a tush hog. He was a tough guy. And uh, Dalton ended up beating him out of 3,800, which we had up on the light. Back then, we'd put the money up and put it on top of the light. And then when you won, you'd get it back off the light because it was the center of attention and nobody could really steal it off the light. So, But when Dalton won that match, the guy uh, ran over and, and took all the money off the light and gave us back our 3,800, but uh, he kept uh, he kept his, so so we didn't win anything. And he said he was going to play the next day. And I, you know, I have every reason to believe he was. But on the way back to his house, I guess I heard uh, he got pulled over and arrested for robbing a drugstore, or maybe he robbed a drugstore on the way home. I don't know. But anyway, he got arrested for robbing a drugstore, so he was in jail. So the next day, obviously, we couldn't play because. <laughs> He was incarcerated and uh, had our money. So Dalton was kind of bummed out about that because he finally booked a winner, and then we didn't get paid for it. So uh, that uh, was definitely a little glitch. Again, you know, you're always going to have good and bad things happen, and, and the good parts is we won a lot of money up there. You know, the bad part was I got robbed, he got stiffed, and then on the way out of town, we're driving his van, he was, and all of a sudden in the back, it started to smoke. And uh, I yelled, called, called it to his attention. He pulled over and all of a sudden the, the uh, van just started, it was on fire. So we got as much of our personal stuff out as we could. I mean, it wasn't hard for me because I just had stuff, you know, that I'd taken on the road with me, but he had a lot of personal items that ended up going up in flames in that fire. and. Uh, you know, a lot of his uh, diaries and notes, and he wrote poetry, and he had a lot of sentimental stuff that I know he lost. And um, we we ended up, you know, on the side of the road, somebody picked us up, and we were driving. You know, we just kept driving south, and I could see in the rearview mirror the smoke going up. The van was completely on fire, and we just left it there. And uh, I remember... Dalton was quiet in the back seat, and, uh, you know, I, I knew it was devastating to him, so, uh, but he never really brought it up after that, you know, we had one little talk, and, uh, you know, I just, I remember it was sad, because, you know, he was such a powerful man mentally, and uh, I remember he quickly wiped a tear out of his eye, and told me that, uh, just like in the rearview mirror, you gotta you gotta let the past stay in the past, and it's like a seed that uh, that grows into whatever you know your future has to offer. But as I've made this point many times, you know you can't really judge what's happening to you as being good or bad, because at some point in the future you're going to be able to look back and and see that that particular situation was beneficial in your life and a lot of us are going through that right now with all this uh, stuff going on and the government shutdowns and whatnot but uh, I do think myself I'm using this time to, to get in really good shape I've been mountain bike riding every day I've been working out uh, you know between the mountain bike riding and the different workout just to get back in top physical and mental health and of course I'm an obsessive studier so I've been studying a lot of new and interesting things, and I try to put in at least three or four hours a day in uh, trying to make myself mentally stronger and 
gaining in knowledge, you know, because uh, ultimately knowledge is our greatest asset. So anyway, I hope things are going well for you. And like I said, no matter how bad it gets, just know that at some point in the future, you're going to be able to look back and see how this benefited your life. And I don't think this is going to be any different. So uh, just maintain a good perspective, keep strengthening yourself mentally, physically, emotionally. And if you want to strengthen your pool game, join me and my private membership group at www.masteringpocketbears.com and I'll share all my systems techniques and uh, mental tricks that I use to become one of the greatest players in the world and uh, I want to help you reach your fullest potential as well. So anyway, till next time, this is CJ Wiley, over and out.